All right, guys. How Down the Dun solved its biggest problem this week in anime. Well, Down the Dun episode 7 aired last night, right? Yesterday. And it's just probably the single greatest episode of anime I've seen in a while. I know I re glazed ReZero a lot. ReZero, I'm having a lot of fun. Super Speech was amazing. But that episode 7 just like shook me to its core of the themes that it was telling me and the direction. The everything about it was so good. So I'm sure we're just going to be glazing. What's the problem? Seven episodes in, Dan 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 finally has my complete undivided attention. You need to watch this season's hidden gem and it's Agreed. not what you think it is. I don't think it's a hidden gem, right? A hidden gem is like something so unmarketed that no one knows about, but like, like Orb. I think Orb is a hidden gem. This is just semantics. His definition of hidden gem could be something different, right? But like, I think Dan 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 is definitely like the most, the most mainstream popular shit. Orb is definitely a hidden gem. The Attack on Titan movie, movie had an interesting end credit scene, and the Fire Force manga is genuinely one of the most ambitious things I've ever read. Welcome back to another- Fire Force is ambitious? This makes me really want to open up that Shonen channel, bro. Kaka TV3, just so we can farm Shonen content. Fire Force, is it that good? That episode of This Week in Anime, make sure to subscribe. Yeah! Baby, that's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Dan Dan Dan, the show that the entire world is obsessed with. Let's talk about it for a second. Now, as some of you might know, I wasn't fully sold on the show for the longest time. I tried reading the manga a while back, but I mm. gave up almost immediately. And while yes, the anime Why? looks and sounds good and is therefore fairly enjoyable, there was something missing. It was a fun show. I think we can all agree on that. But to me, it felt like just that, just like a fun show and nothing. So, like, for him, it's not complete until you have episode 7 to deliver that emotional response. For me, episodes 1 to 6, for sure, it's just fun. From since episode 1, this show has just always just been moving, having fun. Things are always just happening, and it's very, very fun. There's some very wholesome moments, heartfelt moments, but I guess until episode 7, there wasn't something on such a deep, deep emotional level to like bring it all out. And with that component, maybe now for him, it's like the complete package. And that's why the biggest problem was the fact that there was missing that link. Nothing else. It was weird, especially because I had a hard time pinpointing my exact issues with the show. But fear not, ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen, based on my YouTube analytics, <laughs> I have... That's actually pretty good. 10%? I know it's 9, but we can round it up. 9.1%. I really managed to articulate my gripe with the show Where is it? Where is based it? on my YouTube. This is a decent split. Mine is like less than this. <laughs> YouTube analytics. I have finally managed to- Actually, is it? Hold up. How many ladies do we have watching this channel? Probably none because... I'm not really appealing to girls like Saikuno is. I'm more appealing to just a bunch of sweaty dudes that wants to just have like a relatable older bro type. All right, let's see it. Uh, mine is 8%. Here it is. Boom, boom, boom. You see that? This is my split. 8%. So, I mean, it's not a significant difference. It's not too bad. Great split here. A lot of returning viewers. United States obviously dominating, but we also have Philippines, India, Indonesia, and Germany clutching here. This is great. And the age breakdown, of course, there's going to be way more, you know, this audience. But the fact that we hit this many, right? A lot of people, um, because their content is so... I don't want to say shallow. It's, 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 it's the way that I talk. It's the way that I present myself and how I commentate over content that attracts like an older audience that can actually be patient and, and listen to the entire thing. If you're just doing this, oh my God, hype, 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 you're going to have significantly more 1824 viewers and, you know, less of this shit. But the problem with that is then, of course, you got to think about who actually has the money. The demographic that's going to bring in more RPM and has money to sub to other, you know, products. Of course, you want to hit like this audience more so. I'm very proud of the, uh, the, uh, the audience that exists here. The, hey, precious anime, what's going on? And then this is like when you're active. This is, I think, uh, GMT 0800 for me. So like 6 a.m. to like noon. It's like the most active. Anyways, let's get back to this. 
managed to articulate my gripe with the show it's almost like it's my job and thankfully the show has already fixed it or at least it's trying to let's start with the problem itself and then is there a problem though because like sometimes i feel like a lot of these channels they know that like oh this is the episode everyone's gonna be talking about this episode i'm gonna make a video essay about this episode and walk backwards and create a problem that never existed in order to make this video. And if you did that, I do that. I think that's pretty smart. And go over how a single episode, just one, fixed most of it. Here's my problem. I think this show suffers, or more like suffered, from what I like to call the Chainsaw Man Syndrome, which is fitting because Tandadan mangaka Yukinobu Tatsu was an assistant to Tatsuki Fujimoto. What is the Chainsaw syndrome. Man Syndrome, you may ask? It's when an anime is actually creative. No, it's the phenomena of a show being too chaotic. I'm not the biggest Chainsaw Man manga fan. The Chainsaw Man Syndrome is too chaotic. Did I think that Dandan Dan was chaotic? It's definitely high paced. That's what I said when I was saying things are always, always moving. Things are constantly moving and it's very upbeat. Chaotic? The fight scene sometimes, but like overall, I don't know. I know, burn me at the stake. And it looked like this series was going down a similar path, but thankfully, that might not be the case. Let me elaborate also, no more Chainsaw Man comparisons. It was just an example, it's not really relevant. Put down the pitch, folks, alright? That part's over. Dandadan opened up with a series of eccentric, over the top episodes with breakneck pacing. Mm -hmm. Also, by pacing, I mean the speed at which the story progresses and yep. not the number of chapters being adapted per episode. It hit you with a barrage of stylish, enjoyable, and yet ultimately superficial events. Okarun finally befriended someone? That sounds wholesome, there was something so endearing about his awkward mannerisms. Sure hope the show doesn't undercut it in favor of unfunny comedy and action. The show has a vibrant supernatural component? That sounds interesting, sure hope the story doesn't incorporate it into weird, unsavory story beats. The Sex sells though, right? And obviously, you know, leaning into that kind of fan service probably generates more engagement. It's just human nature. Seemingly goofy villain has a surprisingly heartfelt history. One and here's a crazy thing with Turbo Baba. Turbo Baba backstory was never actually given in detail. We have an idea of what happened, right? And I was thinking last night after we watched, you know, Dandaran episode, like Acro Silky's backstory. Holy shit. And... If they're saving Turbo Baba's actual backstory for the end game, who knows? Maybe it's gonna be crazy, or maybe there's nothing there. Goofy villain has a surprisingly heartfelt history. One about her showing up in places where girls were abused and yeah. killed. Sure hope the male lead doesn't bite her tits against her will. That last one genuinely made me do a double take. It was an insane thing to do. Yeah, it was insane. And I think the shock of it just kind of adds to the bizarre humor of Dandaran Dan and the creativeness, right? Is it creative to just bite a nipple? Not really, but in that moment, I wouldn't have thought about it. I don't think it ruins the show, nor is it a problem, but everyone has different subjective things on like, oh, I didn't like that part, or I did enjoy that part, and then they can highlight like, this is a problem, or this is good. Especially given Turbo Granny's lore, create a character to highlight a mature theme like SA, calm down, demonetization man, and have the male lead gain an upper hand by essaying her. What the hell? Ignoring that last bit, the show basically took a think Okarun biting Granny's nipples there is SAing her. If you look at that scene, that was like life or death situation. We're trying to make the best out of what we had and it just happened that the target was the nipples. I don't know. A bunch of interesting ideas and concepts and gave them no room to breathe, none whatsoever. Not everything was fast paced, of course, but except for like this one scene, the show felt like a countdown to the next high octane fight. Some countdowns were simply longer than others. It wasn't leaving a lasting impression on me, it was the TV anime equivalent of fast food. Momentarily enjoyable, but not really memorable. Here's the thing, chaos is not memorable? The chaotic moments not being memorable, or like the slow moments not being memorable. If I think about it, even I still remember like episode one moments where they're seemingly doing nothing and they're just like walking around and tying shoes and getting up. The cinematography is so fucking good with this show. I feel like Dantaran is very memorable. It's fun, but if everything is chaotic, chaos becomes the norm and nothing is chaotic anymore. I think. 
Yeah, if you if you're always chaotic, then nothing is chaotic, right? It's the whole uh syndrome speech in the Incredibles movie where if everyone's super, then no one's super. There's got to be like a time to go all out and a time to chill out. I think I used that exact sentence to describe Chainsaw Man at one point. So much for me not comparing the two anymore. To put it in Danta Dan terms, if everything is supernatural, supernatural becomes natural and nothing is super anymore. If the Okay, if everything is supernatural, nothing is supernatural anymore. <laughs> but there's these downtimes where you interact with other people who don't even see the supernatural shit. And the whole no- it, it's a supernatural show though. And for it to constantly portray supernatural things, does it not make it supernatural anymore? No, you just become accustomed to it. It's just not gonna be as big of a shock show continued to go down this wacky spirit of the week, I just overdosed on caffeine and I have ADHD path, it would have ended up being a somewhat enjoyable but ultimately forgettable experience but thankfully it didn't. Remember what I said about the show fixing the problem I had? What's well, the problem? let's talk about that. My all around favorite episode. Like his problem is the chaos. It stems from Chainsaw Man Syndrome. If everything is chaotic then nothing is chaotic. You're going too fast, and if it's everything is supernatural, then nothing is supernatural. Then there was the other points of essay being brought up. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit too loose with my uh, <laughs> judgment on anime, but I haven't felt personally that the show was losing me in terms of the chaos. There's a lot of breathing moments that happens in these school episodes too, right? That just gives us a lot of time. And when there's times to pop off, it truly does pop off. And when there's times to just chill and lie down, I think there, there is a decent balance. I don't think that the supernatural theme also is suddenly just being forgotten because everything is supernatural anymore either. It's way too early for that. From this show so far is episode 5. It's the slowest episode in terms of pure pacing and it contains next to nothing supernatural, but that's what makes it so good. And I know what that sounds like. The show is good only when it's not doing any of the things it's known for, but that's not my point. This episode. But like that's his judgment of what's good. He enjoyed those slow times. But everything else is what? Good only when it's not doing any of the things it's known for. But that's not my point. This okay. episode did a lot of things that complemented the overall ideas of the story. By slowing things down, it allowed the dynamic between the lead characters to develop. It provided the audience with some much-needed breathing room. It allowed the events of the past four chaotic episodes to sink in. And for sure, relative to the first four, the fifth episode's way more chill. And. When I think about uh, like the strategy behind the first impressions, because I think the first impression of a show is so important. If the first episode isn't a hook, you've already lost the audience. You need to just make them aware of the show, right? First impressions is very important. And maybe that's why the first four episodes were just so fucking hype. Everything was going so fast, just chaos everywhere. There was definitely moments of downtimes in those episodes that balanced it, in my opinion. It's not like every time it was just fucking go, 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 go the entire time, right? Episode 3 is also downtime, though. Yeah, with the granny showing up, I think, right? Um, but uh, if we're going to talk about the relative chaotic, you know, start, it's probably because you want to hook the audience in, show them what you're all about, and then flesh out the characters moving forward. And it made the characters more endearing by grounding them in reality. That last point is particularly important. Episode 5 re-established the fact that both Momo and Okarun are regular high school kids with yep. very regular lives and regular feelings. Assuming you can call being this much of a loner regular. By grounding the characters, the show hammers in the dichotomy between their lives and the irregularity of the supernatural. The show basically went, you saw all that wild stuff, now see how the characters usually live their lives and by extension infer how out of their element they must have felt during the previous four chaotic episodes. Okay, that's perfectly fine. But like, is it a problem that like it was handled then? Did you want that shit to happen in the first episode, the second episode, the third episode? Like at what point? You know what I'm saying? There is no problem. What he wanted is finally happening. It's just that it didn't happen earlier. Therefore, it was just all chaos. Therefore, it's a problem to him. But now that it's been addressed, uh, 
I don't think there's really a problem here. <laughs> I think we're just both farming. I might be reading into this too much, but I think this change in pace was needed and so was this change in tone. Trust me, constant chaos sounds fun, but it's yeah. not what you want. You might think you want it, but trust me, you don't. Also, even... I do agree with that point, right? If everything was constant, just pedal to the metal, it gets boring. You need to have appropriate times to just chill out for a bit and then to highlight the moments where it's super high impact. Outside of that pretentious drivel, the episode was just fun, was it not? It was like your typical high school slice of life rom-com and high school slice of life rom-coms are one of the best things to happen to the medium of anime. So yes, I wasn't f High school rom-com is the best thing to happen in anime? High school rom-com is truly the ultimate power fantasy, man. Don't tell me about isekai, nah nah nah. High school rom-com is the ultimate power fantasy for loser males that can't get anything, but has a girl show up and solve every one of their problems. Yup. Fully on board the Dandadan train, but once episode 5 came out, I was sold. If the show can keep up this sensible style of pacing and storytelling, I'm sure I'll end up loving it. It'll okay. end up being more than just a momentary source of enjoyment. Also, I like how the cast... Momentary source of enjoyment, I think is... A pretty good way to describe how, you know, people that are thinking beyond just hype scene things could, you know, interpret a story. Because, like, yeah, the first four episodes were very hype. And I think there were down times. Like, episode three was pretty chill. Like, meeting Granny, I think, was episode three, right? But, like, um, assuming, right? Assuming everything was indeed just full chaos, right? It does kind of feel that way. It's... A personal preference, right? Again, this, this problem, <laughs> to say it's a problem is, I can understand a personal preference, but to say it's a huge problem, a problem is a huge stretch. Well, this, here's the thing. You shouldn't take YouTube titles seriously, right? Because now you're fixated on that part and there seems to be no problem. And the problem is his own problem. That's a personal preference. But if you title the video of how Dan Dan solved its biggest problem, it's going to invoke a lot of more emotional reactions for people to click on the video. So this is all just YouTube bullshit. It is relatively small. There are so many shows that overestimate their ability to write entertaining characters and introduce way too many people early on. All things considered, Dan Dadan is headed down the right path. And I sincerely hope it keeps this up. I okay. really do. The hidden gem of the season. You need to watch it. It's not a hidden gem, bro. A hidden gem is something no one talks about because it never got marketed, but someone saw it and was like, holy shit, this is good. Hidden gem is orb. Dan Dan is heavily marketed, so mainstream, so fucking popular, been pushed out by the corpos. Nah, this is not a hidden gem. Now, many of you might think I'm referring to mechanical arms, and while yes, it is very good and severely underrated, this section is about you are Miss Servant or Kimiwa Medo-sama, because the former is... Oh, I don't give a fuck about this. I got baited. Yeah, I don't care about this part. I just wanted to see about Dan Dan. Bro didn't even talk about episode 7. Bro, bro didn't even talk about- what the fuck? 7 episodes in, Dan Dan. Dude, he didn't even talk about episode 7. What the fuck was that? It came before episode 7 was released? Oh, I see. Well, I only saw one day ago, so like... Well, that was the biggest nothing burger ever. Here's a video. Please go uh, check out Mr. Probably Pretentious. <laughs> it is what it is.